Hey, my name's Greg. I'm a front-end developer at a SaaS company or a software as a service company, and I give PyCharm a four out of five stars. Yeah, so prior to using PyCharm, I was using uh, very basic text editors for Python code. At the time, we weren't necessarily doing anything crazy with Python. So, you know, running commands in the terminal uh, was sort of acceptable. It was very, very low, bare bones coding. Um, so that clearly, we outgrew that very quickly. Um, and I made my way over to things like Atom, which was fine. Um, but PyCharm seemed to provide a little more concrete um, evidence for us, or, or a backbone for us to work with. We chose PyCharm, uh, there were a few good reasons. One, they have a really good community addition. So um, JetBrains makes a lot of IDEs, and uh, I personally work more with their IntelliJ um, IDE now. It's very Java-focused. But uh, both PyCharm and IntelliJ, they have community additions, which are really great free options to just sort of test out. You know, it's like you can dip your toe in the water, see if they, they fix what you need. And, um, you know, when you're working with bigger projects, specifically like things with like Flask, for example, if you, if you have a very big like Python-based web project, um, having a dedicated IDE to a specific language is a really great way to sort of like... Um, not you can sort of expedite a lot of the development process, and uh, yeah, that's that's what that's one of the things that's kept us around with it. Integrating PyCharm um, for us was not that hard. Uh, in some capacity, I actually started using it at the at the company as an intern. So you know, we were working on a very small project as it was, so it wasn't like we were importing, um, you know, years worth of code. I guess if that makes sense. Um, but for the for the most part, like PyCharm is pretty friendly. Uh, and I think more so than a tool like VS Code, um, it, if it notices that you don't have dependencies installed, if I remember correctly, um, it will sort of install it for you. Um, and at the very least, it provides like a way to do that that's very user friendly, specifically for those people who are like relatively new to coding in general. Um, yeah, I think I think overall it was a pretty easy transition. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it for everyone if you have like a dedicated tool. Uh, but in terms of uh, for us specifically, it was great. It's very smooth. If you're looking for a new Python tool, I would I would first consider what you're using right now and what you're trying to do. Um, so I like PyCharm. Uh, it's like one of the first things I install when I have like a new setup or whatever. And you know, obviously, I company continues to use it. Um, but to that point, when I'm doing very, very small Python projects where it's really, I'm just writing a Python script, right? Like when I'm just maybe trying to accomplish one thing and I don't need to interact with uh, numerous files, I tend to just do it in VS Code because it's quick, it's easy, it's very lightweight, and it doesn't take any time to set up. Um, but that, with that being said, if you are really like, if you have a project, perhaps in Flask or like one of the you know, other numerous uh, packages that you can build Python projects with, um, that's when I think PyCharm shines the most. And so if, if, that's, if you're building something where Python is like the base layer of a very large application, I think Py, PyCharm would serve you well. Um, and at the very least, it's free. So try it out. Um, and if you like it, then I, I don't know, like you can consider upgrading. But otherwise, a community edition was good for us for a long time. So.